Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My beautiful people, I'm going to give you guys the three reasons, to be honest, there's more reasons, but I'm going to give you the three reasons to why I left my job, even though I was making, alhamdulillah, £70,000 a year. Now, let me be honest with you guys, it wasn't easy getting to that number, and I'm not making it out like I was some guru, because to be honest with you, in recruitment, people do make some decent money, and yes, there's a lot of people who actually aren't successful and don't make money, but there are the other bunch, that I would say the 20, 30%, the top end people, who make 70, 80, 100,000, 150,000, and sometimes even more, depending on how many clients they have and depending on how long they've been in the industry. So come about three years ago, Alhamdulillah, I was making like good money. And honestly speaking, I was comfortable. I was honestly comfortable and I could probably have lived all right, paid my bills, gone to work, come home, done my thing, you know. But what were the reasons why I left? Because see, if I tell you guys the reasons why I left, Maybe if you guys can relate, you might be thinking, whoa, whoa, maybe it's time for me to start thinking about other things as well. Now, I'm not saying you guys should leave right now. You should definitely have other things in place. I left my job, right, three years ago. And the truth is, I only had a thousand pound in my bank account. I was making all this money. I was dreadful with saving. I was dreadful with my money. I had no money management. Like I wasn't good with it. You know what I mean? And so I left after working for recruitment for six years and I made good money man from like starting my first year in 30,000, 35,000 I think until 70,000 to when I left, I was making decent money, let's be honest. But I realized one very important thing and that's no matter how much I try to save, I can't save to sort of achieve the things that I wanna achieve. I had big things I wanted to achieve and I, I genuinely thought if I keep working and saving and working and saving and working and saving, uh, but maybe because I was very bad with my money, I'm very bad with managing and you know, I, I just love to eat out and you know, enjoy myself, I wouldn't end up saving that much money. So yeah, I only had a thousand pound in my bank account. I had just got married. Honestly speaking, I had just got married and I thought, let's go for it. Let me just set up my own company because it's about time. And so I set up my own company. So one of the biggest reasons, to be honest, why I did what I did is because I was just sick of it and I didn't believe I could actually get the success and the financial freedom and the happiness I could get in a job. I was tired of working seven o'clock until six o'clock. I was tired of the fact that I would come home and not even have time to speak to my parents in a manner which was sort of befitting for my parents. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you want to speak to your parents with respect, like, Oh, like mom and dad, what's going on? How are you doing? How's life? And so on and so forth. Let's be honest, a lot of the times we're so tired, we don't even speak to our parents with respect, which is crazy, especially as Muslims, where the emphasis on our parents is like crazy. Imagine coming home and you can't even like speak to your parents with respect. And you're just there, like your mom's asking you like, listen son, what do you want to eat? And you're like, mm-mm, why are like, just mom, whatever. Yeah, that asks you a question and you're like, oh dad, just later man, I'll sort you out later. You know, your mom, your mom says, can you do me a favor? And you're like, mm, I'll do it later. You know, I understand. And it's not okay, by the way. It's not okay at all. But I understand because you're tired from work. You know what I mean? And so, well, of course, we want to be in the right mental state. And I do think sometimes, you know, especially something in a sales environment, working a recruitment job, especially other jobs, maybe, you know, it's a bit more easy. That can be very, very draining. I completely understand. And so, yeah, man, I, that was one of the main reasons. Like I felt drained. I felt like, no, I couldn't really do it as much. I needed to do something for myself and I needed a new drive. Look, listen, I just got married. And so I thought, let's just go for it. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me. And you know, the business ended up doing all right. Maybe I will make another video on that later on. So listen, you know, subscribe for the upcoming videos for that. But number two was for my parents and let me explain. My dad got a little bit unwell and at the time I still remember this and this was definitely a clicking point in my head. And I thought to myself, my dad had to go to the hospital and you know, alhamdulillah, he turned out it was fine. It could have been a lot more serious than it was. And I remember sitting there and you know, the doctor basically going through these things and seeing a text message from my director and my director saying, look, you've been off for a couple of days. When are you back? And I didn't want to see that message. I just wanted to be there with my family. I realized though, that if my father was actually really unwell, how was I going to manage looking after my parents and working a job? Of course, they expected me to be at work, but I also would wanna be there for my parents. And so say if that day, 
something serious wrong was wrong with my dad and I needed to look after him for the, you know, maybe, maybe, Allah knows best, really. But say if it, if it was like, you know, critical or, you know, an illness where he wasn't going to make it and I wanted to be there for the last period of his life, for example, that would have been very difficult in my recruitment job. And it might be different for someone else, but most jobs or most, you know, companies as such, they expect you to be there and work sort of thing, right? And so maybe you can take a week off or two weeks, but after that, brother, you better be back. You know what I mean? And so I was like, man, I really need to protect myself from this. I want to be able to serve my parents when I want to serve my parents. I need to be there for my family when they need me. I mean, the parents that raised me to who I am at the time I was 26 or 27, like they raised me to who I am. Like my mother, she looked after me. My dad looked after me. He paid for everything that I ever needed. But if they, if I can't even take them to the hospital when they need me to take them to the hospital, subhanAllah, like what am I doing as a son? That was so deep for me that I was like, man, I, I can't do this. I need to find other ways. I need to find a way where I have more time for my family as well as sort of being there like just whenever they need me you know what i mean like my mom she wants something i should be able to say yeah no problem i'll be there well, i got this i'll know you know what i mean but so that's what i would say was probably the second reason my parents and i genuinely wanted to be there for them and now really thinking about it i'm gonna say this is the third reason but to be honest with you there's many many more and maybe at a late stage i can go through them but the number three reason was i realized man that there wasn't a Muslim role model who was upon the Quran and the Sunnah, who was really concerned about not sinning and, you know, trying his harness to go the right way. And I'm a big believer of rather than coming to people with problems, we should come up with solutions. Because me coming to you now and saying this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong isn't really effective. But if I come to you guys now and say this was wrong and I've come up with this as a solution, this was wrong and this is the solution, at least then we're working towards fixing that, right? So I believed that there wasn't a Muslim role model, especially when it comes to you know finances and achieving wealth and so on and so forth. So I wanted to be that person. Like for the Muslims, I wanted to be the person who lives in a little hut, but is worth you know X amount, who something goes wrong, can send a little tweet out and say it's wrong, you know, who is in a little hut, driving a little car, not living lavishly, genuinely not living lavishly, but is able to help the Muslims wherever possible. And I think wealth is big, especially in our society currently, and has been in the past. And I saw so many problems with us and the Muslims and you know, achieving wealth or finances and so many people chasing that money and chasing that money, they were getting lost. You know, I saw good money at 27, 28, but a lot of people, let's be honest now, see that like, you know, 40s, 45, 50, but it's too late then. It's already too, you've been chasing that money for that long, that by the time you get there, you've got children, you've got a house, you've got everything like that, your responsibilities are so much, you haven't got time to focus on your religion because you're working your job so much. And so, you know what I mean? Like you're just so crazily into it. And so I realized that I needed to achieve that wealth, show people that that's not the way. You're just gonna chase yourself until your grave, basically. Don't do that. The life of a Muslim is different. And so started the journey of this channel and obviously the recruitment business, which to be fair, the channel came a lot after the recruitment business, but that was the third reason that I really wanted to try and become a role model to the youth. It's hard to become sincere. It's, you know, I battle with my intentions all the time, but may Allah forgive me and, you know, man, it's hard, it is hard, but hopefully that gives you an idea of why I left my job. Now listen, if you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to the channel. But look, that's all from me today. Barakallahu feek. You guys are amazing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.